I want to read these poll um, numbers from Reuters because I think the, you, you, one has to understand what has happened in the country in the wake of Sandy Hook to also understand uh, what uh, President Obama and why President Obama did what he did this week. Um, this is a poll from Reuters taken mostly before Obama released his recommendations. 74% of Americans favor a ban on assault weapons. Uh, 26% opposed. A ban on high-capacity ammunition clips was backed by 74%. 26 were opposed. 86% favored expanded background checks of all gun buyers, including sales at gun shows, and between private parties, with 14 opposed. Uh, 14%. We have. Uh, this is a big change on these numbers. Oh, especially you have to understand the the, the background checks has been pretty constant because the thing that that and, um, because most people it's one of those things where um, I think people were saying you know that they that some of the Republicans are getting the benefit of the doubt at certain time. I remember reading this last election because when they said they were going to cut people's Medicare, people literally just didn't believe them. I think Paul Ryan got some of that benefit. Do you remember reading some of those yes, stories? Yes. Yes. Well. You know, the, uh, you, you've got a similar thing here, which is the background checks numbers remain high because I don't think most people, when you talk to them, actually believe there already were background checks. Right. They literally couldn't believe that somebody um, who is a, is a felon or a terrorist or, or running a drug cartel or mentally insane or you, you know, or a serial domestic abuser, and you go and go on, can walk into a parking lot somewhere and out of the back trunk of someone's car could literally just show their ID and they would be legal at that point. All they have to show is a driver's license for them to get a 50 caliber rifle that can take down a helicopter, to get uh, an assault weapon where you can walk into a school in Newtown and mow down 20 kids and six teachers uh, and administrators. They just didn't believe it. So they've always been with us on that, I think, and I think the more and more we've explained this to people, uh, they've even become more steadfast. The real change is on assault weapons and on the, 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 these clips, just the fact, these, the magazines, the fact that you know, the, these high-profile attacks – Virtually all of them. There are exceptions. Obviously, the Trayvon Martin thing was high profile, but what that led to were people starting to attack stand your ground laws, too. But in this particular case, from Aurora to Tucson to the Sikh Temple in Wisconsin, to, you know, to what happened up in Portland, Oregon, to, I mean, you know, you name any of the recent attacks, the one that people have mostly forgotten about now that took place in a, in a workplace in Minnesota that happened this summer, Cafe Racer, the shooting in Seattle, and pretty much all of these, somebody was either firing a high-capacity magazine or firing an assault weapon. And so, whereas literally, I would tell you six months ago, you either had a plurality of people in favor of banning assault weapons, it would be like 47 to 43 or 48 to 42, or at best you'd have it in the low 50s. Look where we are now. Look what happens when the other side fights back. Look what happens when the other side exposes the NRA uh, for the, being the horrors of, of arms dealers that they are um, and, and the enabler of extremists of all stripes. Uh, this is what happens because when people get the right information and, and, and the other side, you know, is out there actually making their argument. And there have been some of us who've been making this argument for a long time, but there are a lot more now. You know, um, it, it's the, what's fascinating to me about this from uh, a from a just a, a pol politically uh, observing the the politics of this. And it, it, there's a there's a certain consistency that we're seeing at the very least from the Obama administration on, and and I perceive this uh, the, this issue of guns to be a a social issue, um, and that it is very much tied into the identity politics on the right. The this notion of uh, it being a culture, this notion again of you know, I think there is no right-wing social issue that cannot be explained by the notion that someone's coming to get something from me. They're coming to take my guns. They're coming to take away traditional marriage. Uh, they're coming away to take uh, my jobs. They're coming away to take my taxes. It's, you know, the, the, the right-wing mentality is always one that is under siege, and they must, must... Uh, create this sense that they're under siege as a way of activating their base. And whether it's the loss of traditional values or whatever it is, something's always under attack. They're coming to take our guns. They're coming to take our freedom. They're coming to take our liberty. Uh, they're coming to take our way of life, et cetera, et cetera. And, yeah, I don't, I, I, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought well, you were done. But it seems to me that uh, President Obama, we've now seen him um, basically – 
evolve when it comes to marriage equality, embrace that issue, uh, support it, when the numbers got to be about 51%. Or, yep. or more. Uh, we saw President Obama embrace uh, choice. And people for, tend to forget that, you know, it was not that long ago, maybe eight years ago, 2004, I think it was, where we heard the Democratic Party sort of attempting to make a shift in the same way they did in abandoning uh, sensible gun control back, uh, you know, in the early 2000s where they were starting to say, like, we have to reach across and understand the sensitivities here. Well, that was thrown out the window in this last election, much to the benefit of the electoral prospects of President Obama. And, uh, and, I, and I would peg that to the point where uh, the uh, Department of Health and Human Services put out that, um, that fairly uh, innocuous ruling about uh, health insurance needing to provide birth control, frankly. And it, and it, it basically, the, the right took the bait. Santorum ran with this. It seriously uh, hurt and uh, forced Romney to move to the right. Uh, and we saw it with marriage equality. And now we're seeing it with guns. That, uh, right. that the administration made the determination that we have reached a tipping point where we, if we come out now, we're going to push that needle even further, but it's beyond the tipping point now. And in some ways, it's, it's working out, it, it would appear, uh, in a similar fashion as to marriage equality and um, uh, basically the argument that women have sovereignty over their own body. Right. Well, you and I, look, you and I have discussed some of these issues for a long time, not just issues as in specific political issues, but communications and other things from the White House and how that first term it often just seemed like they didn't want to fight, and especially if they thought they were going to lose. Um, and, the, you know, uh, our friend Digby wrote a great post about this the other day about the importance of having the fight, of making the argument. Even if you don't win, the rights understood that for years because they right. moved the ball. You know, they moved the chains. They move what, what is possible the next time around. They tax Social Security that first time and fail, but they're back again five years later. And that doesn't seem as crazy because it's been done before. Right. You know, and that was what was driving us, I think, crazy. Also, just the fact that you have this bully pul pulpit. You have a way to move numbers. You have a 13, 14 million member email list that trumps the NRA membership or the membership of the National Right to Life Committee or any other group like that. And you just want to be like, use it. You know, use the stuff you have to you and, and your high approval rating. I mean, what more evidence do we need from this past election? I mean, besides the four gay marriage proposals going through, I mean, an open lesbian was elected from Wisconsin, which is a state that has a lot of rural areas, by the way. Um, it, she wasn't elected from Massachusetts or right. New York. She was elected from Wisconsin, which, again, is a lean, lean Democrat, uh, Democratic swing state. But still, you know, I, it's just, I get so tired like, of the myths. You know what I mean? Of dealing with the myths, and that's what we've dealt with the NRA. And you break it all down in the end, you know, the, which you could by studies done by people like Paul Waldman, or you could just look at, you know, electoral results, and, you know, on your own this time, and you would see, they, you know, they had a 0.83% return on investment, the worst of any group. Everybody, pretty much everybody who stood up to the NRA this past election lost. People that were too pro-gun were beaten in primaries by more progressive people. And this happened again on gay rights, and this happened on women's rights. We elected a whole crop of fantastic women. The entire delegation from New Hampshire now is women. 